In this recording I'm going to be considering Symfony and the front end. I'm talking about CSS and JavaScript and how you can fit it in with the Symfony framework. And in particular, I'll be looking at a tool called Webpack Encore. Now Webpack is a module bundler, mainly used for JavaScript but can be used for other front end files. It's fairly complex, so what the Symfony guys have done is they've created something called Webpack Encore, which is a bit like Laravel Mix if you're familiar with that, and it just makes Webpack a bit simpler for those who aren't an expert in this stuff, like myself. Before I kick things off, I'd just like to remind you that I record in high resolution, so you don't have to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you, and also if you're new to my channel and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my stuff, all you need to do is subscribe. And click the little notification bell. Let's get started by creating a new Symfony project. So using the Symfony binary I say Symfony new I'll call it Webpack Demo and I'm asking for version 5.1 of the Symfony framework. And then I'll move into that folder because that's where I'm going to be running my commands from. Okay there are a couple of dependencies which I'll mention before we get started. One is for Node which you can download from the address on the screen if you don't already have it installed. And the other one is for the Yarn Package Manager, which does the same as NPM. So if you want to install packages or run um, your commands using that, that's fine. I'm just going to use Yarn as it's what um, the Symfony documentation uses and recommends. Let's now go and get Webpack. And we can do it just by saying Composer require webpack because we're using symphony flex that will install and what it's actually installed is this here symphony webpack encore bundle before i get started i'm just going to configure php storm to use the uh, symphony plugin so i do that by enabling the plugin i just make sure my folders are right for the web directory any public for the app directory it needs to be set to source and i just apply those changes and then we'll see what Encore has installed for us. So you should now see an assets folder and inside that's an app, a JS file and a styles folder which contains an app CSS file. So don't worry too much about what those do at the moment because we're going to be covering it in detail. Next we'll have a look at package JSON. So this is where we declare our JavaScript dependencies and also our commands for running the scripts etc. And then finally we have a webpack.config.js file which is this one here. So if you're using webpack you'll need to have a webpack.config.js file which declares all your configuration and a good thing about webpack encore is that it's all done for you in a way that's easy to understand. It requires webpack encore at the top of the file here and then using an encore instance there's just a bunch of methods which are easy to, um, to read and understand just simplifies the whole process and it communicates with Webpack under the hood. Let's go ahead now and install those dependencies that we saw in the package JSON file. So all I need to do is run yarn install. If you're using npm, just run npm install. Okay, we're good for that stuff. As you can see, we've now got a node modules folder with all our JavaScript dependencies in. So before I get too heavily into the explanation of all this stuff and how we um, write our JS and compile our front-end assets, etc. I just want to create a route and a view where we'll be able to see the fruits of our labor. So what I'm doing is um, I've created a controller called App Controller, which I extend Abstract Controller, and I've just got an index method that I'm all I'm going to use it for is to render a template where we can see all the changes that we've made to our JavaScript and our CSS. For routing, I'll use annotations as per usual, and I'll just set it to a home page route, so just a forward slash, and that'll do us. And then obviously we need to get annotations because that doesn't come as default anymore. So I'll compose that require annotations, and I'll also get twig while I'm at it. So there we go, we've now got annotations and we've got twig. So what we need to do is go and create that app HTML dot twig file which we're going to render if you're unfamiliar with twig or you've not used it much in the past it's basically a templating engine which symphony uses and it allows us to inject variables php variables etc into our uh, into our view files or template files as we call them 
So what I'm doing here with app HTML twig is I'm extending a base twig file and uh, the base twig file is what sketches out the basic layout, um, declares this as HTML etc. And I'm going to drop some of my code into where this body block here sits. With that step taken care of I'll now try to explain some of this stuff. So here's our app.js file which can be found in the assets folder and this file is used to import all our other dependencies, all our other JavaScript that we want to compile and we even import our CSS as you can see here we're importing styles app CSS. Now let's move over to webpack.config.js so like I just said previously this gives us an encore instance with a bunch of methods that do the work for us and you can really tell what these methods do just by reading the name so set output path this gives us the directory of where the compiled assets will be stored set public path this is where the server will look for those assets and all this stuff can be configured to your liking you don't have to use these defaults so add entry this is a very important part what this does is it looks at this app.js file and then it will create an app.js file and an app CSS file in our public build directory. The easiest way to show you what I mean is to just run it. So yarn encore dev. That will do a dev compilation of our assets. So there you go, three files are written to public build and here's our file. So it's created an app CSS Let's take a quick look at that one. So there we have a body tag and that comes from our styles app CSS. So that's been written to that file. Here's our app JS. So I never promise you it'd be pretty, but hopefully you should be able to pick out some of the bits here and recognize these. As you can see, it's importing our styles app CSS. And all we need to do in order to make this stuff work is to just now add it to our page. So in base.html.twig, I'll add a link tag inside the head to point to our styles. I'm using, I can use this asset method because we pulled in the asset bundle when we grabbed webpack and that points towards where all your compiled assets are. And at the bottom of the body, I'm adding a script tag which points to my app.js. Now, this is how you would traditionally do it. However, Instead, we're going to use a couple of methods which point to this file, the entry points JSON file, which is generated by Encore and it contains the exact file name to render. If we enable versioning, then these files will be given slightly different names each time that they're compiled, and that helps with things like cache busting. I'll show you more of what I mean regarding the names towards the end of this when we compile for production. In the meantime, I'll show you those methods. So for the CSS, it's encore entry link tags, and then we pass in the app entry name. And then for our JavaScript, it's encore entry script tags. And again, just the app entry name. And that'll take care of things. And the name app, of course, is what we specified in our webpack config.js file in this add entry method. Okay, let's just add something to our app.html twig file in order to render something to the browser. So I'll just put a simple paragraph in here. This is my first Symfony Plus webpack page. And what I want to do is start up my server. So I'm going to use the Symfony binary. And so what I do is Symfony server colon start dash D and that will start it and keep it running in the background. Just grab the address here, go over to the browser and this is what we've got. So that started life with that uh, rather dull light grey colour. I'll change that now so you can see the compilation taking place and the changes being made. So let's just make it some random green colour, that'll, that'll do us. And then all we need to do is compile our assets again. So yarn encore dev. All looks good, back to the browser, give it a refresh. And there you go, it's now been given this lovely bright green background colour. Now, we don't actually have to keep going back to the console to run the command to compile the assets every time we make a change. We can actually use this command here, encore dev dash dash watch. And there's a shortcut for it, which is just watch. So we put yarn watch, 
And what that will do is keep watching your files and as and when changes are made, it will compile them. So in order to see that in action, what I'll do is I'll change the color of that paragraph text. So we'll go with white smoke over to the browser, give it a refresh, and there you go. We didn't have to go and run um, our console command to compile the assets as it was already running. Here's a quick little side note. You've probably seen this console log in your app.js file. Let's go over to the uh, browser console and just check that that's being logged. And there you go. Hello, we're back on core. Edit me in assets. App.js. Okay, that's all working great. Let's now use our app.js file for what it's really supposed to be used for. And that's for importing and organizing our front-end files, mainly our JavaScript files. So what I'll do is I'll create another JavaScript folder in the Assets folder, and inside that I'm going to create a JavaScript file called Generate Header. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a function from this Generate Header JS file into the app.js file. And when everything's compiled, this should be pulled into the app.js file, which is in the public build folder. Okay, so all this is going to do is just going to take one argument, which is going to be a name, and then it's going to return a welcome message, which contains that name. We don't need anything more complex than that because we're just demonstrating how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import, and I'll just call that generate header from the generate header file. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to import jQuery. So as you can see, our jQuery import here, it doesn't have a path to a file. That's because we're importing it from the node modules folder. And when you import from the node modules folder, all you need to do is put the package name. OK, so before we use jQuery, we're actually going to need to add it. So the way we do that is we say yarn add jQuery. And by adding this dev flag, it'll just save it to the dev dependencies. So that's pulling in jQuery. Great stuff. We should have that now. Let's start up Yarn Watch again. And I think the best way to demonstrate both of those imports is to write a little bit of jQuery, which also incorporates our generate header functionality. We don't need anything too complex here because we're just demonstrating the uh, Webpack Uncore tool rather than anything else. As we can see, Yarn is still watching. Over to the browser, give that a refresh. And that's just what we wanted. The header has been added there, so that's obviously compiled. Let's actually go and see for ourselves. Here's our compiled app.js file, and as you can see, there's the generate header uh, function. What I'll do now is I'll show you how to compile SAS down to a CSS. The way I'll start is by changing my styles app CSS to app SCSS. And hopefully that should have automatically been changed. So if we look at our app JS file, the name's been changed to app SCSS also. And so what we now need to do is we need to uncomment this line here in our webpack config.js enable SAS loader and whenever you make changes to the webpack config file you have to restart yarn so it's telling us that we have an error and that we need to add SAS loader and node SAS in order to enable SAS loader and fortunately for us it gives us the exact command to run now if you run the command it gives you things might blow up on you because there was a dependency error so if you append this 4.14.1 hopefully things should work for you Okay, great stuff. Now let's write some SAS. So if you're unfamiliar with SAS, um, it's pretty good. You can actually set values to variables like you can with programming languages. So what I'm doing is I'm setting a variable here, header color, to a hexadecimal sort of purpley blue color. And then I'm just going to set my paragraph text 
to that variable and that should come out a sort of bluish color so i'll set yarn watching again then all i need to do is go over to the browser give it a refresh and there we go our paragraph text is now this bluish color and so what we'll do is we'll have a look at how that looks in our rendered css file so in build app css as you can see it just converts it all to css just as we expect okay for my final trick i'm going to show you how to compile things for production and we can do that with a shortcut by just saying yarn build and by minimizing for production what will happen is it will uh, minify our files and also version them so here's our starting web pack as you can see quite messy so once that's complete our files will not only be smaller they'll also have slightly different names so here's our app or what was our app.js file all minified and compressed there and here's our app css which is all being written to one line so in a project of this size it's not going to make much difference to your file sizes but however once you start working on large projects and your files start getting it into the um, tens of megabytes etc for your front end then you can get quite a performance gain so let's give the browser a refresh and as you can see everything's working exactly the same so even though the file names have changed they're still being picked up because of the entry methods that we used in our base html.twig file so that brings that one to a close don't be afraid to ask any questions if you have any also if you want to leave any comments or feedback you can do that in the comments down below and if you'd like youtube to show you my, more of my stuff all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon i release twice a week and details of my schedule can be found in the discussion tab on my homepage.